Chargers. Touchdown, UCLA. With USC great and NFL stud, Frosty Rucker. The Trojans back in front. And LAFB founder, Ryan Zyrood. On the Believe Podcast Network and LAFBnetwork.com. This is your destination for Los Angeles football. Los Angeles. And for this episode, primarily Rams fans, as we are previewing this huge tilt between the Seattle Seahawks and the Los Angeles Rams. Thursday night showdown. Get that bad taste out of our mouths right away. We have a great show for you. Welcome to the L.A. Football Podcast here on the L.A. Football Network. You can find us everywhere you listen to podcasts, also on the Believe Podcast Network and streaming and video platform on YouTube. Just search LAFB Network. Subscribe, hit that bell. We appreciate it. And you get updated all of our shows. All of our podcasts across the LA Football Network are right there on that YouTube channel. So you can catch all of them. Or now with you know Apple doing that whole channel feature, you can find all of our shows there too. Just search the LA Football Network. You're going to find all of our great LA football shows. But like I said, we're previewing this Rams-Seahawks game today. Frosty's jumping on with me. Frosty hasn't talked to Rams in a while. We've had him on for the Trojan huddle, um, but he's coming back with me. And then we are joined by Brett Davern, of uh, host of the Brett Davern Show, also host of the Seahawks podcast, with his co-host, Lofa Tatupu, uh, the great USC Trojan. One of the best. Him and Frosty played together at USC, our best friends to this day. And he did deal, he did do some time up in Seattle for the Seahawks as well. So that's why we have him on for this show, but had a ton of fun. Uh, as you'll notice, we didn't even like, we just jumped right into it. Like I've been, we've done this a few times now, dating back to uh beginning of last season and gotten to know these guys, both Lofa and Brett, that is very well. And we, you know, we just get on the mic and just start jabbing and going back and forth. And it's a ton of fun. So don't even have a formal entrance intro, uh, intro, if you will, basically this is my intro. And then we just get into the conversation. So, uh, it sounds kind of odd, but it sounds organic. It's fun. You know, we have a blast. So uh, looking forward to getting to it and we're just going to get right into it. But show is always brought to you by betonline.ag, our friends over there, uh, the best prop bets, the best money lines, the best, uh, you know, spreads that, uh, the, the betting world offers you head there on mobile or desktop. You're going to get a great welcome bonus. That's free money. First time sign up and use on your first bet there. So why not use free money to win some money? So betonline.ag, uh, Stafford and Herbert, I believe, now are tied for MVP odds uh, at betonline.ag. So, you know, we got some good quarterback play here in Los Angeles. we got some good every play. I know the Rams disappointing, disappointing loss to the AZ Cardinals, but we're going to get it out of our mouths right away as we talk about this Seahawks game because I see a big bounce back for this Rams team. Big bounce back. Uh, and then, yeah, Chargers, huge win on Monday night over the Raiders. Got, I got into that light up last episode, into the hype and the greatness that was there. And then we'll we'll preview that Chargers-Browns game on another episode we'll do later in the week, as well as uh, do some UCLA and USC talk as USC plays Utah, who Utah's underwhelming this year, but so are a lot of teams, it seems, and they, anyone can beat anyone. So still been a, a, a big game. And then UCLA looks to rebound from that bad loss as they travel down to Tucson to take on a... Um, Pretty porous U of A squad. Shouldn't be much of a game. UCLA should route them. But you never know. You never know with the Bruins. You never know with the Pac-12. But we're going to get into that later in the week. Uh, uh, you know, probably on Friday is when we'll do all those. Uh, so right now, this is a Rams-focused show. So get hyped. I'll always love these matchups with the Seahawks. Every division game's fun. But going up to the link, Ramsey and DK Metcalf. Now Stafford against Russ. The running games. Will McVay stick to the run? We get into it all. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Here's my friends, Frosty Rucker, Brett Davern, and Lofa Tatupu. We I'm could from send you the footage, but you guys didn't even send our donuts. So oh, oh shit. Yo, that's on me. Listen, that I'm glad we're recording. But I wanted to get to this right off the bat. Like Lofa, it's, it's I mean, open. I jump on the Zoom. You're not here yet, you know. I mean, what's what's that Pete Carroll says about five minutes? Or whatever, but anyway, whatever. They're First ganging all, up on you. Just people. jumped right past rule number one, people. which is protect what? the team. You just threw me under the bus. He threw you. Did in. I? Okay. And you didn't give me well, any Venmo to buy donuts. So 
Bro, I'm, I'm out here by myself. These two guys start yelling at me about donuts. I'm like, listen, I want our show to pay off our debts, okay? I need we Darid. apparently made a bet. I need Darid's number because I have to text Frost for a link. Didn't even get a reply. Texted Brett. Nothing. Oh. Katie Katie replied. Thanks, director, wow. Ka- producer Katie. Uh, yeah. Obviously, me and Darid, are the, we're the brains of the operation. Yeah. Here. I was going to send it to your Instagram, but I was like, I figured they had you. Uh, well, I, maybe we'll have to try it again. <laughs> All right, whatever. I don't, I don't know, I don't know if I'll bet you again, but I'm on the donuts this week. Get some and I'm going to. Yeah. Make it right. Hot pot. Here we go. I'll get pot. you the whole assortment. I just want to try. I, get them, get them the I, golden Tate special. I could also come out there. Oh, yeah. You should have came. Late came night, night, a late uh, night special golden tea. When are we hey, flying out? Or was it early a.m.? Which one? I think it was early a.m. Oh, for, for sure. sure, early a.m. <laughs> for sure. When we flying out, Frost? We get, we got the action green ready. We got the neon green. We that. got the uniforms. Yeah. We got the uniforms that drive the league crazy. We're ready for you the guys. Speakers man. turned on. The microphones turned on for the speakers. You got all that. <laughs> That's right. What, what happened with uh, with you guys? What happened with the Rams? Let's talk about that. Yeah. Would you like to go? Yeah, there? I thought you guys were gonna, you know, just run the table this year. What happened? Matt they played Stafford, a really, really, really good Cardinal team. Yeah, they are good. Cardinals are legit. Not saying great. I'm saying they're really, really good. And you know, me being a former player, I've been kind of biased on this, but it's like I kind of been waiting for them to employ. You know, what I mean, a little bit implode, but mm-hmm. then at the same time, it's like they just keep doing the damn thing. I don't know how to, yeah. you know. Well, I didn't, I'm not a believer in that type of offense. I'm just not. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, yeah, Murray's the only guy that scares me. Like, you know, when you're talking quarterbacks, I love ours. But the only other one, you know, I know we're talking golf. Jimmy G, not a believer. Um, in fact, Trey Lance is probably going to take that job after this week. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. But, um, but the Cardinals and that defense and the pieces they got, right, Bring in J.J. Watt. You get Chandler Jones finally healthy. I mean, what do you go for five in that first week? He's uh, yeah. That guy needs to start getting some some MVP recognition because I mean, it's I've never seen someone get twenty sacks or fifteen plus. He doesn't get those MVPs are the same reason they won't resign it. You know, until he gets that recognition. I think that comes from that has to come from up top though. That has to come from your team pushing you to get that. You Mm -hmm. have to post that. Can we not get a, you know, they make memes yeah. all day and go back and forth, right? Yeah. How about the push to say Chandler for MVP? He, he really belongs in that conversation. Yeah. Well, Here. I was going to say, no, what I was going to say is we were, <laughs> we were saying on our show uh, that it's like the, the Cardinals are like uh, the Chiefs with a defense, you know, like, because that offense is, is really, you know, rolling. And then they got that defense Fair. to back it up. So. They're scary, man. My question is, if it goes late in the year for the Cardinals, it goes late in the season, and just like last year, uh, Mighty Mouse gets hurt. They're back up right now. They're Who's back their backup? Up. <laughs> Who, is Who is it? Colt McCoy. Can he run that offense? Can he run that offense? Listen, think- Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy beat our Seattle Seahawks last year with the New York oh, Giants. He, he did, didn't he? Yeah, but not yeah, running, not running a Cliff Kingsbury offense, though. Not, yeah, no, not, that's true, but I'm just saying there's life left in the whole hole. It feels like that offense in provision is the key, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Tyler makes the plays to make it go, right? Mm. It's all the extra stuff. Just this yeah. past week, you know, everyone's giving kudos for staying in the pocket and throwing two touchdowns, but it's like, other than that, he's running this way, the old Russell. Yeah. I mean, no one, no one talks about the offensive the line. Tyler makes it look a lot better. And the old Russ showed up well, last speaking week. Of the old Russ. Yeah, yeah. Let me go to is. my background here, right fellas. There. The old Russ, the gritty, dirty Russ, man. I, I want him to grow the beard out. I've, I've, listen, I'm not afraid to say it publicly, guys. I want the dirty, gritty, like Russ with the long hair. You know, I want a full of grass stains. He had a beard, man. Like season Two season three, there was a game against the Cardinals. I remember where he yeah, was he just like, getting kind of mountain man with it, and like he that was when he was doing this kind of stuff the diving for the pylons and the you know taking on uh tacklers and stuff. And he was doing that in the second half against the Niners last week. Lofa, right? I mean, well, like season two, if that's when he was getting the grizzle on, they did win the Super yeah. Bowl that year, so that's a pretty I mean, good. Our- 
are are him and Kyler more just like first half QBs? Because Russ was what leading MVP last year, and then he kind of fell off. Does he get sustain it, or like what what happens throughout the year? They're all of a sudden the teams just figure it out more. Because last year, know. second half of the season, Russ was different than first half. He didn't have any running game last year in the season. Um, we we lost Carson, and then we lost Hyde, and then um, you know DJ Dallas, who's who's looking promising. The, they, no one's going to bite on the play action. Him, we had Collins, and you know now that we're actually running Collins, and he's running really well. Mm-hmm. It's it's you know boding well for the play action game, and um, and so. But last year I, the injuries were just it was too much, and um, they took away the deep ball. They took away Lockett, you know, down the seam and Metcalf, and forced them. And that's what you kind of you got to take what you can get. And and the, the, he got impatient at times, and that's kind of what happened. But um. Right now, we're seeing the most efficient Russ we've seen. I mean, the numbers aren't gaudy. They're not three, two, 300 yards every game, uh, but he's touchdowns every game, no turnovers. And, you know, Frost Ruck knows how much Pete Carroll preaches that and loves that that aspect of the game because there was some insane stat where we were like 50, 51 or 52 and, and two when we won the turnover battle in college. Right. And uh, so that's what he's – he's just trying to get back to those, uh, those basics up here. I'll say too, though, Ryan. I mean, for me, I, I'm sorry. I, I just was going to say that I, Lofa and I differ a bit on this. Like, uh, you know, you're kind of asking about first half of the season rust, second half of the season rust. I think sometimes, and as a fan, and what do I know? But sometimes I think Russ gets a little tight, honestly, and like holds the ball a little too long, pats the ball a little too long, waits for things to be a little too perfect sometimes, and get as the season goes on. I mean, it gets a little tight. And that's why I love this run and dive for the pylon Russ. And I think that's why me as a fan, that's why I think we need that guy. Because when he's loose and having fun out there, that's when he's at his best. And uh, sometimes, I, I don't know, for whatever reason, it seems like he tightens up. But so I'm hopefully he's getting a little older. Let's, let's put in the, yeah. the fact yeah. that he's getting a little older and he has a lot more to risk. If he gets hurt, the whole thing's over. You know, he was fighting for different things earlier. Not to say the drive isn't there, not mm-hmm. to say the passion isn't there, but you know, Russ is coming from an off season of turmoil where everyone was questioning if he's going to be there, right? And yeah. now, if you know, he may know a little bit more than me, but uh, when I was playing versus him, he was one of the hardest, if not the hardest, quarterback to catch because he was a true dual uh, threat. He can run and he can throw, not just. He yeah. can get out of the pocket. He can loft something up, but we're still going to call him a running back. No, he's an elite passer. And when he can go dual threat on you and he's not uh, afraid and he's not scared and he's, like you said, diving for the pylons, yeah. with the rust that, you know, this NFC uh, is scared to have. Well, and Brett, it kind of, I, I, I never can explain this. And I know not a lot of golfers are like this, but for some reason, I always play better on the front nine. Maybe because I don't care that at that point. I just started. I'm like, I haven't played in nine months. I'm just going to go swing the sticks. And then I was like, oh, shoot, I, sh- I shot like two over. Let's let's kill on the back. And I shoot like 14 over on the back. So maybe yeah. that's maybe that's the Russell thinking too much in the second do, half. Of the season. Do beers play a role in that? In that Usually a, a 14 to 15 beers also play a role in that. So that's probably, yeah. I don't but think Russell's doing that in October, but. I think, I that's, I think that's a great analogy, man. Yeah, I yeah. do think it's like that. Yeah. I'll say one more thing about, you know, Russ, before we move on to whatever topic you want to go next. Don't in. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, you know, the the actual the run game in which we are running now, this shotgun run, Frost, you can speak to it. When the quarterback never hands it off, why do they run out of the shotgun? Because, I mean, it's no longer read options, just a true handoff. And, I mean, it, it always looks soft up front, you know, even if you have a great old line. Yeah, and that's what I – when I – trend to tell you that I do not like that style of offense. I just don't. It's yeah. too passive, too, I don't know. I, yeah. I need a fullback. You know what I'm saying? To be completely honest, I need a fullback. And a lot of people aren't running fullbacks. And they're not running powers and stuff of that nature. Yeah. Where know, is it, where is all the gap trap gone? It's too easy now. You just they're using tight ends now. They're using tight ends. And they're switching the gaps with that that uh, that zone. Yeah. You know what I mean? That split zone. They're switching gaps that way. So football is just becoming more – how do I trick you instead of like, yeah, you know, I'm, like, I'm just going to get the guys and beat you up. And I mean, that's, that's what works. Wear somebody down, but just like Frost is talking about that split zone when the tail or the fullback or the tight ends come across formation. If you're a smart football player, you just fall back with it and you don't even get touched by the lineman. Like that's how easy it is. Um, so, I mean, like you said, they are trying to trick guys, but 
I mean, just follow that guy to the ball, and you're gonna you're gonna make a tackle for loss every time. There you go. And Lofa, you're one of the smartest ones to ever do it. So <laughs> not everyone Smart. can do that, Loaf. Smarter, not harder. Is how do we? Who do we blame? Can we blame John Madden or EA Sports or who do we blame for like these overcomplicated, try to trick you like Frosty said offenses? I think like, it's college. Are people, and they're not even complicated. They're just I think, I think it's college. The, really? I mean, yeah, in college, you don't even have to huddle up anymore. You stand at the line and you look to the side. Oh, right. oh, they're in cover three. You can't see that. Like, that, though, there's a there's a serious, and I think it's being coming harder and harder to play quarterback in this league because you're coming from college where you you get to play from the sideline. Everybody gets it. You don't even have to use a cadence. So like you don't ever develop those skills of drawing people off sides. There's a lot that gets missed in college now, and now it's trickling up somehow to the NFL. Well, there's college coaches coming to the NFL. You got Rule, Urban Meyer. I don't know how long he's going to be there, but he's here. Mm-hmm. Um, All right, <laughs> All right. Couple other guys, you know, it's just Kingsbury. Yeah. Kingsbury, Kingsbury is, you know, Pete Carroll. So, Shit. Yeah, you know, I, I give Pete a little more credit now. Yeah, he's he's ten different. years, man. He's yeah. he's got a Super Bowl ten years, and you know, um, and he didn't really bring too much of that. Like with Beast Mode, we ran power and we ran zone just straight at you, and we oh, see, yeah. yo, how long do you want to step in front of that monster? You don't. Yeah. Yeah. Or the people doing pad on pad when you're playing a def- being a defense alignment right there. You don't want to keep taking double teams like that. It wears off. Oh. Well, I think, I think, sorry, Brett, I think in Frost and Loaf, obviously, you know a lot more than me being in the locker room, but just from a fan watching, and now that I think fans, whatever you agree or disagree, have a lot more say in how organizations run. I think fans can run guys out of town, and because college for now over a decade have been running these soft offenses, these spread offenses, and they come to the pros, and the pros tried to stick with what they were doing, but they got sick of these quarterbacks taking four years to develop because they had to reteach them whole offenses. Offensive linemen didn't know how to how to block correctly. They reteach these top 10 tackles how to block. It's, and they said, well, screw it. Let's just do their offense because we're wasting time and money teaching these guys. I'm going to lose my job because some guy that played at Texas you know, can't freaking block. That's it's wild that. that the yeah top, you know, first rounders, you know, and I've seen yeah. it come into the league at offensive line and they're not adequate run blockers. It's like, yeah, yo, like, that's the first thing you should know. You should not be better going backwards. I mean, there's a couple of phenomenal athletes, Walter Jones, mm-hmm. you know, all those great tackles that could do both. But when they run block, you know, it's, it's, it's hell coming at you, you know, for 60 minutes. And, and you know, Frost, I was talking about this. My main concern, um, and you've been there before with me in the trenches. <laughs> well, I wasn't in the trenches. I'm not going to go that far. You were. But um, when we were at SC and we score too fast or we three and out or, you know, and so we're going through that right now up here in Seattle. And I'm wondering, you know. Can we hold on playing 70, 80 plays a game? That's almost a game and a quarter game and a half. And I just wonder if that's going to you know, take its toll on, um, on Bobby and the defense, man. They're out there a long time. Absolutely. And um, just like you mentioned, it's the number of snaps that these guys have to play. And if they, if they can't keep up with that pace, it's not so much if they were in shape and they worked hard in the summer and all that. You move past that. It is real yeah. life, everyday stuff because mm-hmm. you still have to practice. So now you can think about your practice reps and you try to monitor that, but then your game time. So that's over a course of the season, you're paying thousands of more snaps. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People don't understand that because people have to go to practice. Oh my God. You, if you're in the tub, you don't get to go out and run out, uh, out the tunnel. It doesn't work yeah. like that. Wait, can I ask you guys a question about that, though? Mm-hmm. Uh, because I don't know if you guys watch Hard Knocks or whatever, and I haven't really heard a lot of former players talk about this. Uh, they have all these new technologies and stuff that they use. They have, like, microchips in guys' shoulder pads, and they're tracking how far they run and how fast they run and how much reps and all the all of the above. Um, and, you know, there's all the – they don't – I mean, you guys – you two-a-days in training camp and things like that, full pads, you know, they don't do a lot of that stuff anymore. It – and a lot of that's the players union, this and that player safety. I get why, but is it, is it diminishing the game and, and the product on the field a little bit? Like, is that why we're not seeing the same physicality? I mean, Lofa, we were talking about this on our show, the game, it's, it feels a little slower sometimes and less physical than it used to be, obviously um, for a lot of reasons, penalties, this and that I know, but yeah, also almost- just like the practice time it, practices are different. Everything's different. Yeah, you would think if you take all that away, the game would get more intense, more physical, you know, more uh, barbaric, if you will. But, I mean, it's it's almost like they're conditioning themselves to, like, take it out of it. And, like, mm-hmm. hey, now we're just going to, you know, 
we're going to try to just form tackle or, you know, place our shoulder here and like think of th- overthinking instead of, you know, just running through somebody, which is what me and Frost were, were, were taught. Um, it's from it's over legislated a bit. I mean, like players playing tight, like we talk about with Russ. Right. You got to look at this. The culture of football is completely different. And that's what Lopa is alluding to. We grew up, we had double days. They don't have those anymore. Right. Right. They almost allow this game to be the way it is. They want big points. They don't want overly physical because we, we look at it from a coaching standpoint. Some coaches take it too far at practice, right? They keep you after an hour after a double day and things of that nature. You don't have time to recoup, to eat, to do all these things. Mm-hmm. But then on the opposite side, when you make a rule and you make it a, you know, a rule across the board, there's no leniency in if people want to work a little bit harder. Right. If you want to go out there in a certain time, you can't in the spring. Right. Right. Sure. So there's no gray area with it when you make certain things ironclad and then the culture and, and football has just changed and we have to adapt to it or we're going to still sit here and talk about when we grow up like that. Yeah. I know. You know? I got the curmudgeonly old man. No, and I don't want to be exactly. Man. That's what and I don't want to do. You have to and Frost are not yeah. out here saying, you know, the game is softer or these guys couldn't make it back in our generation. We're not saying right. that shit at all. Right. Because these they're bigger, faster, stronger. They could absolutely dominate in, mm-hmm. in any generation if they're dominating now. But it's just, um, I think, you know, creatures of habit. If we're continually teaching ourselves to practice this way and you know and like there's no pads in your mind you would think that okay then they can go all out on on sunday but it's almost like they're conditioned to okay just you know we got to make it through here and do this and this is how we do it and so um, there's there's ebbs and flows to everything different eras in every sport you know the nba in the 80s was physical and then it became more finesse, more one-on-one. It goes, it goes, you, saw, blows, you know, you and, saw that hit that Nick Ballore put on Ayuk in the punt. <laughs> and yeah, I didn't get to give this play. It's, you know, true, you know, shining moment spotlight. I put it on my story. This is what, I mean, he, he ran through him and Ayuk is a big physical, tough receiver. Um, and he's going to be a really good one too. And he got his helmet ripped off, spun sideways, stood up, and just sat there like, yo, who the hell just hit me? Mm-hmm. And, I mean, we're not seeing a lot of that anymore. And, I mean, I, you know, that that's – so that's concerning well, you, to me as a fan of big hits. Yeah, you get them every once in a while. Like, Jamal had a good hit on Kittle and stuff. Yeah. You get some big hits. But I think what, what you guys were talking about is, as far as, like, running game especially and, like, the power runs and things like that, like, you just you're not seeing the same physicality on that, and I just wonder if it's because they don't practice it as much. No, way they don't it, Brett, and they're afraid of fines. Yeah, yeah oh. that's that's for damn sure. I mean, oh, so, so playing you know, tight, my, right? Brett, in my career, I spent time at the competition committee meeting at uh, each combine. Uh, the last, I would say, six years of my career, I went out there and I was in these meetings and, and listening to head coaches, general managers, and some owners in their they didn't understand the concept of the game going as fast as it did. Yes, you want to protect knees. You want to protect heads. Mm -hmm. I get that. But the game is going so fast when people duck. I may not be able to duck in time. So it's either you have to wage your bet on taking this fine or letting someone score. Right. And getting fired. So you got to take this hit where they can go for $26,000 or $30,000, $50,000 just because they said it. Then they reduce it. You know, to mm-hmm. fifteen, it's like it's still fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, and you know, I, yeah. I didn't want them to score. But no, they, it's it's hard. I mean, now you have guys like making a huge play and then wondering how they should celebrate too, or whether oh, they yeah. maybe flexed <laughs> too hard or something. It's it's all yeah. over legislated. I mean, from yeah. the practice regulations from the union side, the league side with the rules. I I know it's hard, man. Everyone is bigger into people's feelings, Brett. People yeah, feelings now. Yeah. Before they didn't have any it's wild. They didn't uh, care what anyone said from the public. Yeah. The same uh, way with the concussions. They didn't care until the public knew. Yeah. I'll what give you mean? An old, old man take. I'm always yelling Lofa right about like the jersey exchanges after the game where they're all smiling, but like I'm pissed off on my couch because they just lost a close game, but they're yeah. you know, taking Instagram pictures well, on the 50th well, line. Like, but there's some I mean now there, there is a different game. There's different like there's a code to that. It's like, look. I'm not going to be out here smiling, handing over my jersey if we just got our asses kicked. That's kind of like, yo, man, good game. You know, just tell I'll your – I'll send it to you. I'll send, yeah, it. T- I'll send it to you. Send yeah. it over. <laughs> you don't – I mean – Not anymore. 
No, that's I, our era loafa thing that yeah. we didn't sit there and do all that. And towards the end of my career, because I was the oldest, whatever, and I was out there and it just became a new thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So then the only reason the reason I did it at the end was just for another Trojan, right? I'm yeah. a guy like that. And I would take that picture or someone I played with before. Yeah. I'm not just a but random I mean, dude. You fucking smoked me today. And, you know, here. <laughs> now they're all, now they're all grabbing a drink with Urban Meyer at the bro, after the game. The, the, oh, <laughs> so oh, there there okay. was, hey, bro, there was, seven, whole other there was seven guys just a year, a year or two ago lined up for a Lamar uh, jersey, you know, and like, so yeah. he's, as it was his MVP year. Yeah. And can you imagine that though? It's like, that's wild to me. I'm like, yo, they're like good game and all, but I'm, you know, yeah, respect, I'm, but come I'm on. I'm going to send, I'll send it to the, yeah. To the, yeah I'm not going to sit out in line to get the opposing quarterbacks, you know, signature in Jersey. And he was signing yeah, them, and clout, them but everything's for cloud. Everything's for media. Yeah. Everything's for that. The, yeah, again, another, our, our error thing where we didn't have access to it. And then all we have was Facebook. We weren't even allowed to give out our jerseys. They, yeah, like, they were like, no, nah, college. These Charge for that. Were, these kids have Facebook. We're gonna stitch that shit up and put great. it back on. Like, I was like, <laughs> we, I can't get another jersey. Just give me one more jersey. I, you remember all that? Now it's like a built-in package in their contract where they have like twenty. Dude, years. it's insane. I mean, and yeah. but the NFL, you would think for marketing purposes, they would have allowed it back then. It's like grow the game even more, get more fans. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. like alternate uniforms, they should have a whole bunch of different ones. Hell just yeah. Different, right? But who am I? Yeah, just a guy. Just Get us guy. in those meetings, Frost. Just we'll, a, we'll, a, we'll a set this shit right. Just yeah, a just retired vet. Retired vet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But this game. I mean, who's taking this game? Do you guys? Let me ask you this: the Seahawks guy. Obviously, me and Frost always talked good about Jared Goff. He was the Rams' quarterback, but I think it's safe to say most Seahawks fans were not scared of Jared Goff whatsoever. Does Stafford instill any more fear with this offense? I know we last week was a bad it. week, but overall, we lost to Jared Goff without a hand. Jared, yeah. like, Jared <laughs> Goff. Like for some reason he was always able to beat us. It felt like I was. I, we were celebrating Goff leaving town. Um, yeah. you, there you go. You, you yeah, just, I mean, Lofa didn't even like the Stafford move. Actually, I love. I was like, how do you trade a guy that took you to the Super Bowl? I know you had Gurley. I know you had the defense. But how do you trade a guy that's won playoff games, even with one hand against us, versus a guy that he's old and he what zero and three in the playoffs? Lofa, believe it or not, it happens all the time. Look at what happened today. Mm-hmm. Isn't Gilmore gone? That yeah. is the Panthers. Yeah, that all happened in about five minutes. He yeah, is, but he was like a reigning like MVP inside. just a year ago. Yep. And, you know, he was contract. You know, this this move puzzled me. And I just did not understand it. Obviously, the first few weeks, it's looked like it's going great. But he just faced a really good defense. And, uh, you know, my question to you is, what the hell happened, man? I thought this was, you know, 19 and 0, 20 and 0, whatever Super Bowl for because we got because McVay got his guy, right? This is the guy yeah. he wanted the whole time. What happened? Well, I mean, you should be the first. No, you have 37 points. It's going to be the how defense your, couldn't stop anyone. Let's see how good your defense is so we can say they faced another one. Yeah. Right, dominate Stafford. Okay, first of all. I hope, but you know, <laughs> you know, as I know, he can flick that ball, and he has the weapons. And you, okay, the ball. so I didn't. You really don't that think? That I didn't. You really don't think Stafford's an upgrade over Goff? Not at this age. I mean, what is he? Thirty-five. Yeah, it's like 32, 33. I think Stafford turns thirty-three in February. Thirty-three to see if yeah. he can go. I think this year, this move solidifies Stafford's career because he was in yeah. Detroit all those years battling, playing hurt, doing everything he I could. Got, I got respect for him playing hurt. I mean, with oh, bridge, all the bridge broken fingers. All the time. You know, yeah, he, he went through a lot of collarbone. A and, so let's give him his due, and he's on a good team, and let's see what he can do. He faced a very tough, yeah. undefeated Cardinals team, and that was the, the result. Let's see what Seattle does out there at the link, and if they show up. You guys have guys that have been coming to play every week. Even my boy Robert Kandichi's out there making tackles and stuff, and I've been yes, super pumped on him. And that's a feel good story mm, that yeah. not many people are talking about. You, you know mean, what? What? Okay, my question with I know the Cardinals are great defense, but what happened? Like I saw Henderson. I didn't watch any of the game, but I saw him average like six yards a carry. Why does that guy only get 12, 13 carries if he's averaging six? I mean, had, did he break a long one or something? No. So we've I've talked about this a ton. I can't remember if I've talked about it with you. Love Sean McVay. I think he's a top ten top seven coach but the dude just abandons the run out of nowhere 
Just yeah. stops running the football. Well, I got a guy up here. That. We, you guys <laughs> sent Lord. the poor guy. You guys just shipped us Shane Waldron with all these promises of a new offense. And it's like, oh, we're pulling our hair out for the same reasons that you are. Or yeah. we're pulling out Sean McVay's gelled hair. Does that stuff even come out? What is, he, is that LA looks, by the way, on your coach? Do you go? It looks, it looks the like blue whatever you're rocking. Game? Extra what? hold. Oh, How dare you? Walking. How dare you? This is just whatever. Okay, but no, to your, you know, Ryan, so to your point, like, you know, the games that we've disappeared in the second half, we've been on the run. Even this last game, I mean, yeah. the stats didn't look great. It looked great for the Niners, if you like yards, but not points. But um, we we stuck to the run. We had over 20 carries, which is what it has to be. You yeah, have to it has have. to be. And so even though we did play 75 plays again, which is, you know, yikes, the time of possession was still split about 31 to 29. So I'm not as concerned about the defense being tired this week, even on a short week. Um, but, yeah, the run game, look, he, he, McVay's guy who came up here at Waldron's done the same for us. But Chris Carson was averaging eight yards a carry against yeah. uh, Minnesota. Didn't yeah. see another carry. We saw one more carry in the second half, and it was just like – we have what? to run the ball. If the Seahawks have success running the ball, they can have success in this game. They need to run the ball. They need to have success running the ball, and then they need to stick to it. Um, and then you just got to get Russ to get rid of the ball and not let that pass rush and Aaron Donald do what it does to us every single time. Yeah. <laughs> I hate them on Aaron Donald. Who wins? Who wins? Honest running the ball. Who wins? I, I think the Rams are going to bounce back, but go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I I think that Tyler Lockett does very Tyler Lockett things in the corner of end zones like he does against you guys in the action green. And I think that we score enough points to win. And I think it's going to be a whoever has the, the ball last wins kind of game. So I think on our show, I called it like the Seahawks win by half a point. <laughs> yeah. But, so I, th- I just think we we're going to win, but I don't really know how. And I think it's going to be a wacky Thursday night. Uh, you know, it, this rivalry is always fun. So we're going to win because we always show up in prime time, right? And uh, uh-huh. but yeah, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm not concerned. There's a lot of things that concern me. Yeah. You know, um, that run game. Hopefully, you guys don't use it because it is good. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, Cooper people have had Cup. a lot of success running on us right now. Cooper Cup. I hate playing against Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. Woods. Once says he I should mean, be a Seahawk. He he was right there in Spokane. We could have had him. I know. Yeah. <sighs> Um, How's per- Lofa, do you, so are you, are you calling a win here? I'm going, I got a win for the Hawks. Yes, I do. I think, uh, I think we're, we're going to get some turnovers and that's, what's going to happen. That's going to be the tale of it. We're going to have to get at least two, maybe three to, to slow down. And we're going to have to protect the ball. You know, Russ is going to have to continue to do what he's doing. He had like 180 yards, 170 yards last week, but he had two touchdowns, uh, ran one through for two, um, yeah. Yeah, and so it's like if you can have that kind of plus minus, you know, in your favor, then you know it, it's going to bode well for you. So I got the Hawks, and, but I'm not sitting here saying I'm not concerned because, um, you know, Aaron Donald he scares me. Lofa and had I don't it. Even, uh, I don't even play offense. He scares me. Lofa <laughs> had it officially on our show, twenty nine to twenty six Seahawks. That's his uh, official exactly. pick. And exactly. we actually also do a thing on our Instagram where if people pick the correct score of the game, we'll buy them a jersey. You guys so, aren't buying anyone anything. Anyway. Yeah, uh, well, I'm start, this time. start by you guys don't. It's first. Anyway, Brett, <laughs> go on, anyway, Brett, Brett, go on mute. Um, <laughs> All right, I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> you know, um, I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking a slugfest. I'm thinking a Thursday night game that goes into overtime maybe because both these teams have something to prove. Mm. I think uh, the link will be rocking. I think, like Lofa said, um, there will be some turnovers in that game that are going to be costly for someone. And I do think we we're going to continue to see the old Russ. And I think it's going to be a Russ Stanford show and see uh, who can fare. And I think dual threat Russ is going to be an absolute problem. And um, as far as a winner and it's our show and it's the LA football one. <laughs> okay. You pick against all the time. It's no, okay. I know I do. I, I do all the time. Uh, I think this is a bounce back game for the Rams. That's what scares me, Frost. (laughs) They know, just like you know, that everyone wants to see the run and they're going to run the ball. Mm. I don't have the the record in front of me, but Sean McVay is pretty damn good after a loss. He doesn't lose two in a row very often. And uh, he knows what they messed up. He knows what they did wrong. And I think they they bounce back. The current concern for me is the 
the secondary outside of Jalen Ramsey's looked a lot worse this year than it did last year. Obviously, losing John Johnson and Troy Hill has been a much bigger deal than a lot of people thought. Mm. And so, you know, I think Ramsey will be on DK Metcalf, which is always fun. But, you know, it seems like Ramsey usually wins that battle. But Tyler Lockett could have a huge game. Gerald Everett, what about the former Ram? That guy, yeah. If he, right, is he yeah. off the list, off the, the COVID, if he is, then yeah, yeah, kid's a stud. But um, we haven't, every time we throw to the tight end, we get 30 yards. So, I, and we just stopped doing it after the first time. I don't know why. But um, the name you guys need to remember, need to remember is Freddie Swain. This kid is coming on and he's earning a lot of trust from, from Russ. And, you know, that's the biggest thing when you're a young receiver. You know, the guys like Aaron Rodgers, um, Drew Brees, Tom Brady, all the greats, they don't throw to the new guy until he proves over and over again that he can show up and make the catch. And he's been doing it and he's been making yards after catch, which is pretty, pretty awesome to see for the young guy. I think he could be, I said this on our show. I think he could kind of be our Cooper cup, you know, speaking of Shane Waldron, like he's just, he's yeah. He, like Lopa said, he's really showing up. He's, or maybe like the next Jermaine curse for us, you know, just yeah. good hands, good possession guy. Yeah. I'll tell you what though, like Frost said, he thinks they're going to actually come out and, and try to, you know, establish the run. Um, which a lot of people have had success on. I don't know if you watched our, our defense, Frost, but we've kind of moved to, to the stick defense. Um, so it's almost like the 5-2, 3-4 variation. And uh, for whatever reason, the gaps are not – the fits are not clean. And, we, you know, um, we're making a lot of five, six-yard tackles, you know, six-yard gain tackles. Um, and we then when everybody starts creeping up, that little play action has been killing us right over the, over the top. And so um, – I, that's what I one thing I know we got to get corrected over here is we got to get that run game shut down. All right, we got we got two minutes, so let's end it like this quick. Give a shout out to Lofa's company, Zone In. I know you guys do it on your show. Give me one player you're zoning in on as the player of the game, quick, succinct. Brett, start with you. Tyler Lockett, action green jerseys. Here comes some more highlight film, and you'll see it on Sports Center. Boom. All right. Finds Alex Collins, uh, running back. He's he's he looks great. Um, and I think he's going to get more opportunity with um, Chris Carson might not make it this week. I know he had a neck injury um, that was listed on the uh, report yesterday. Love it. Deshaun Jackson, he only caught one pass last night. He said something on Instagram about it. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm expecting a big game out of him or a really big play. He's still fast. Yeah. God. You can burn. All right. It's my, sh- it's my show. I'm going to going on offense. <laughs> Bobby Trees, because he has not been um, involved at all. Sean McVay said he wants to get involved in the offense. So we expect a big game from Bobby Trees. And then on defense, Terrell Burgess has played like zero snaps. Guy to Utah third-round pick. I think he's their best nickel corner if they play him like that. David Lawn struggled last week. So I think Terrell Burgess actually comes in and has a big impact in this one. So there you have it. Me and Frost, I guess, like the Rams. Lofa and Brett, surprise, surprise, like the Hawks. Should be a great one either way. Fellas, uh, appreciate you as always. Thanks for uh, jumping on and talking ball with us. Thanks, guys. Right, fellas. Appreciate it, y'all. Guys, get ready for our tweets when we win. Bye. <laughs> and donuts. And donuts. Hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. I love getting on those guys. I wish we had more time. It's like there's not enough time today. We could have talked for hours, but, you know, everyone's got busy schedules. Uh, glad we were able to make it happen. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm sure we'll do it again on the next matchup for this Ram Seahawks. But it um, should be a great game Thursday night. Like I said, I like the Rams in this one. I think a big bounce back. I think McVay. If they doesn't lose very often back to back, it has happened. It's like it's never happened, but you know, he's pretty good after a loss. And I think uh team just looked unprepared last week. And I know this week is a short week. I don't even think they're practicing per se. It's mostly film study, mostly classroom work. Uh, you know, they're not hitting each other because it's short. They want to keep their bodies fresh, but I think they'll come out good. I think they'll stick to the run. I think we'll see Bobby Trees involved. I think we'll see the secondary play a lot better where that means Rochelle is going to play more, Ter- Terrell Burgess is going to play more, or David Long is just going to step up and play better. I think we'll see improvement. Hopefully the running game, or the running defense, excuse me, improves as well. But it's not going to be fixed in four days, guys. Let's, I mean, it's not like all of a sudden the defense is going to go from what we saw on Sunday to what we saw last year. But we can see improvement. I think last year was more of an anomaly, anon- anomaly, there we go, than the norm. It's been trending not great, We've seen some good things, some bad things. Then last week was like the the pinnacle, the, the worst we've seen. I don't think that's the norm, though. I don't think we're at where we're going to be last year, and it's going to be an uphill battle. I mean, we lost some key players, including coaches. Many, I mean, not just Brandon Staley. You lose Joe Barry. I mean, we lost Aubrey Pleasant, and then you lose four key starters and contributors. There was going to be some growing pains. And I know everyone wants to jump down Raheem Morris's throat. 
and we can get into the history of Raheem Morris and how he hasn't had a top five defense, yada, yada, yada. But there was going to be some growing pains. There had to be the expectation of that. Now, I don't think growing pains should be giving up 37 points and not being able to stop anything. It was a bad game. Let's call it what it was. But I think we'll see improvement and we'll see this defense get back towards looking like we want them to look. We're not going to see that in four days from la- from Sunday. It's going to take more time than that, especially when they're not even putting the pads on this week until, until kickoff. But if we see some improvement, some better tackling, some better stuff schematically, some better stuff from the secondary, that's something we can put our hat on and say, okay, we're through week five. We've got 12 more of these to go. We're good. Let's keep improving, keep stacking wins, keep building brick by brick. So we'll see. We'll uh, talk on Friday, recap this game, as as well as preview the next three for LA football. So thank you all for tuning in. Again, find us everywhere you listen to podcasts, the LA Football Podcast, Apple, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher. We are everywhere you listen to podcasts, right on the LA Football Network, LAFB Network. Dot com and on YouTube, LAFB Network. Appreciate you all. Enjoy this game. Peace.